Hi, Mr. D here doing another quick calculus video on limits at infinity. All right, here we go. A couple definitions we've got to get through. Uh, one is this, the definition of a limit at infinity. Let's slide this over a little bit so we can see it. I don't know why we're turning so much. Let's do this and go here. All right, so um, here we have the blue line is some function, right? <clears throat> and as this function is coming down, it seems to be hovering close to this green line. There's something about the function that it doesn't keep spiking up and down anymore. It's leveling off or heading to in one direction, one value. This is the limit. We talked about limits earlier before, but now we're looking at it more specifically when they go out, when x's go out to infinity instead of a specific number. So what is the trend? What is the response of the y values as we keep going out to either positive infinity or negative infinity? So with this L, as long as we can track some m value, right, some x that is in a range, an epsilon range, right? We talked about epsilon delta proofs before. So epsilon is just the difference between where it might have been. So a, a given range of y values. And this L is running down the middle of it. And so we write this statement. It says the limit as x goes to 0, or x goes to infinity, of f of x will equal L. Okay? Now. This means that for every epsilon that's greater than zero, meaning it's above, there's a space between that E or that uh, the L. So there's some distance here. It's positive distance, right? Distance here, distance there. Um, there exists some M that's greater than zero. So some M or some X value. As we go along, there'll be an X value such that when you take the y values, right, and you subtract the L, so whatever the y value is, here's a y value, there's a y value, there's a y value, and you subtract this L or the uh, limit, it will be less than the epsilon. In other words, it'll be within these red dotted lines. Okay, so it's gonna it's gonna keep continue to squeeze together until we find a point there. When x's are greater than m, so any x greater than this than a certain point. Okay. It also works for negative infinity as we're going the opposite direction. So as long as the epsilon is greater than zero, the n value is less than zero, meaning it's on the negative side of the uh, Cartesian plane, xy graph, and then x's are less than n, so it'll continue to work as well. All right. So Let's look at another little theorem that we want. we're going to use more in practical, practicality. So if R is a positive rational number and C is any real number, then the limit as X goes to infinity of C over X to the R will be zero. So if we have some constant and it's being divided by x to the r, which could be irrational, it's positive rational. It won't work if it's negative rational or negative number, because then it, it flips it and creates a multiplication problem. But they put rational numbers because even a whole number can be written as a rational number, right? So the idea is that even if it's to the one half power, if that thing goes to infinity, then it's going to cause the whole thing to go to zero. Furthermore, if x is defined when x is less than zero, then the limit, right, then the limit is also zero. All right. So let's look at an example or two to see what we're, what we're trying to do here. We're given the limit, we're asked to find the limit of 2x minus 1 divided by x plus 1. And what happens is that, you know, there were, were different ways where we could find the limit. One of the ways was through direct substitution. Well, if we try direct substitution here, 2 times infinity is double the infinity size, and we subtract one, uh, it's still infinity, right? I mean, it's a, we don't know what that number is. If I just take infinity plus one, um, infinity plus one, then we get an indeterminate form, and so we have to come up with another algebraic solution. Well, one of the solutions 
is found right here in this theorem. And that is, if we have some value, some number, we divide it by an x to some uh, r value, then we, we can get at least something. If we take the limit of that, then that will go to 0. So what we've decided here is divide both numerator and denominator by an x to the first power. Now you might ask, well, how do we come up with x to the first? Well, if you look in the, in the function, it's only x to the first. So we don't have to go squared or anything else. But what we do, 2x minus 1 divided by x, and x plus 1 divided by x. Now, algebraically, we can split those apart. They have the same denominator, so we split them apart. 2x minus 1, or 2x over x minus 1 over x. And I think you can start to see what's happening here is x over x plus 1 over x. And simplification says, that, well, x over x is 1, so that's just 2, minus 1 over x. And then x over x is 1, and so plus 1 over x. And now, as we take the limit, as x goes to 0, this will go to 0, and that will go to 0. And so we're left with just 2 over 1, or the limit being 2. All right. Second equation, second situation, example. x squared minus x plus 1 over x squared plus 1. Now, in this case, uh, we've got a couple different x's in here. So we might ask, well, which, what x should I use in order to apply the same strategy? Well, we always want to go with the highest value. Uh, so divide both numerator and denominator by x squared. So we get x squared minus x plus 1 over x squared. And we get x squared plus 1 divided by x squared. And now we can break them apart. You get x squared over x squared minus x over x squared plus 1 over x squared and x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared. Now this whole thing will turn to 1. This becomes 1 over x squared, or x, and 1 over x squared is remains. In the denominator, again, x squared over x squared is 1 plus 1 over x squared. Now, when I take the, the limit as x goes to infinity, right, that, according to the rule, is going to go to 0. That one will go to 0. And that one will go to 0. So we, we're left with 1 over 1. So the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is equal to 1. And that is our limit. And that is finding limits to infinity. And in one strategy, there are more. So stay tuned for more information. Hope you had a great time. Enjoy the video. Take notes. Talk to you soon. Have a great night. Math is awesome. Yahoo. D-Dijkstra out.